It's Young Classics 2008. It's Alex Belfield with you, talking to the big stars of classical music. And we're talking to a young man who is a big star and has got a brand new CD out. It's called A New World, and he's a top man. Will Martin, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice to see you. I'll tell you why. Because the ladies love you. And I've always wondered what that feeling is like. Explain. <laughs> oh, we're straight into it with the first question. Um, you know what? I'm... Can I say I'm completely focused on my music and I'm not distracted and I have no idea what you're talking about? Really? Because, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be famous, to be popular, to have girls buying the CD, to have ladies loving you. I presume you're a housewife's choice as well. I think um, not only the housewives, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to pop into a few schools recently and, and, and do some uh, do some singing. And, um, and the young, young ladies uh, seem to be enjoying my music as well. I suppose what you've done is make it cool, you've made it accessible, and you've brought a CD out with music that is classical. When you put a CD together, how important is it to pick the right tracks? It's crucial. Um, it, it's vital. And in fact, you know, I am so happy still looking back on the CD. I mean, it was recorded over a year ago now. And the the, com, the compilation of the 12 songs that we have on there, it's, it's, it's so varied. And yet, you know, in the forefront of my mind when we were choosing the repertoire was the fact that I will be singing these songs for potentially years to come. And so I want to not only love the music, but love performing the music. Um, so, yeah, as I say, really happy with the uh, song choice that we ended up with. We're going to play some tracks from the album during this piece. We're going to find out about you and your life. You've got an amazing northeast accent. Lovely. Where are you from? <laughs> northeast of New Zealand. Ah, yeah, uh, Auckland. So how do you find your way over here? It seems to me that most New Zealanders work in pubs. Well, you know what? I was I was working in pubs back in New Zealand when I um, I started playing the piano a bit. I was singing. I discovered singing at high school through the school shows. And uh, upon leaving school, I started taking a little bit more seriously, although obviously as a singer you do what is logical and you become a waiter because that's what you do um, I was supplementing my uh, my love for singing but I had to pay the bills as well so that was why I was a waiter I was waiting in in, uh, in pubs and also working behind the bar on occasion and uh, yes yeah, slowly but surely I phased out the uh, the hospitality work and phased in the singing work starting singing at weddings and bits and pieces and eventually became an entertainer um, and that I was very fortunate that took me all over the world my first contract was in Dubai um, working at the Hard Rock Cafe actually which obviously is a far cry from, from the music of crossover what I'm doing now um, but from the Hard Rock Cafe in Dubai, I jumped on cruise ships and I worked in the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, the Pacific and um, got around the place, always with the goal though to hopefully maybe one day record and perform this crossover music. Tell me about your voice because it's interesting. I'm not into operatic voices. They annoy me. I find it uncomfortable. Yours is more easy listening. It's not stretched. It sounds like it comes very naturally to you. Have you worked at that or is that just God-given? I think um, it's a combination of the two. Obviously, there there is gift there, um, and then you sort of work on that, you enhance it. You know, there's a word that comes up in the media sometimes a lot in New Zealand specifically, and that's popera. They they sort of uh, refer to this crossover genre as popera, and I get into a bit of trouble because I get violent when they use that term. <laughs> um, I get violent because if you look at me as a performer, I mean, they use that term referring to me, and there is nothing operatic about what I do. Um, I do not have an operatic voice. I don't sing opera repertoire. I hold a microphone. You know, I certainly um, don't look like an operatic performer. And so with that in mind, you know, I sort of feel that on occasion I need to just correct and clarify. Um, but in saying that, in terms of my voice, it's, uh, people say, sort of more lyrical, I suppose. Um, but the focus for me, I started, as I mentioned before, I started in the school shows. And so I was trained initially, you know, you're telling a story, you're in a character or what have you, the most important thing is that the people at the back of the room can understand what words you're saying. So diction, the clarity of the word is the most important thing so you can get the the, the song across, the story, the journey, whatever it is that you're telling. Um, so keeping that in mind, I've obviously, I've always had that as the priority. It doesn't matter what I'm singing or where I'm singing it. I want to know that um, my audience can hear and understand because uh, you can hear but not necessarily actually know what's going on in a song. Every word is very important. We're sitting very close today and thank God I didn't call you a popera star. I mean it could have it could have ended in tears this couldn't it? What's also interesting about the voice on the album is you wouldn't know where you're from. It's funny how accents go don't they? I, I actually first noticed that, that probably I don't know what 10 years ago when I listened to the 
<clears throat> spy skills. No, spy I, skills? It, look, it's 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 a, this is an illustration, <laughs> right? This is an example. I'm proving a point, right? So listening to the spy skills because they obviously, I mean, they didn't have their uh, accents shining through. It was sort of dumbed down, I suppose, with the with the accent. And um, I think from a singing point of view, training as a classical singer in musical theatre also, um, it becomes sort of neutral, I suppose. Um, there are times when I can sound very Kiwi um, when I'm cheering on the All Blacks, perhaps. But then there are times um, when you know I th- really think about it and and sort of mellow it out isn't the right word, but to just to have it less rounded as as us Kiwis speak um, and and easy listening, I suppose, not only as a music genre but also as a um, as as the way you speak. We're back with Will Martin here on your favourite local radio station. That's Going Home. It's Alex Belfield talking to the big stars of classical music, and most of them are young today. It is fantastic that you're banging the drum and singing the praises of these great songs. Um, Was there ever a point where you thought, I want to be cool and I want to be pop? Um, You've made a wise choice because those people come and go very quickly, don't they? I think uh, they they can do. They can do um, staying... Image is so much more important in pop. Although in saying that, it's 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 becoming more important in in all music, you know, including the classical world crossover or what have you. Um, but I I've always been motivated by two things. I've been motivated by the music, and I've been motivated motivated by the people in front of me. Um, if I was sitting in a pub at a piano and someone came up to me and said, "Will you play a song by Van Morrison?" I'm not going to turn around and say, "No, I perform classical music, and that is all that I do." Because obviously, if there's one person in that pub they don't like classical music, then you're probably not going to impress them by, you know, throwing an aria in their face. Um, but in saying that, you know, I mean, there's a time and place for everything. And the, t- the type of music that, um, that, that I am recording now, this, this crossover sound, I mean, it's just, I think it's understandable why it has such a mass appeal at the moment, you know. I mean, the music is great, regardless of whether it was written hundreds of years ago, but also there are, for instance, tracks on the album that were written in the last few years. Um, But with that consistent sound, a big fat orchestra, what's not to love? Tell me about the feeling of standing in front of an orchestra. I find it magical, I find it moving. For you, when you've got them behind you, for you, is there any way of describing the emotion you feel when that orchestra roars... I mentioned working at the Hard Rock Cafe in front of a five-piece rock band, and it is nothing compared to working with a full orchestra. Um, The orchestra feature on the album was the Prague Philharmonia, some of the greatest players in Europe. And um, whether it be them or, um, obviously, um, all of the local orchestras uh, in the UK... It is, it's unreal, and there are some questions that I really struggle to answer, um, to put into words. You know, I I don't have a problem talking most of the time. If you ask me something, I'll try and answer it pretty much straight there and then. But, you know, how does it feel to stand in front of an orchestra? I mean, just to watch an orchestra, um, just to sit there and listen, I mean, that alone is, is an amazing experience, let alone actually being a part of it and having my voice sort of float along and do its thing um, on top of an orchestra. It's an amazing opportunity. Let's go back to the club days and the cruise days. What is that feeling like on those nights when maybe there's a free buffet and they're distracted or they've had too much to drink with the free bar? It's a completely different life, isn't it? Of course it is. It's very different. You know, it's hard when, um, you know, nowadays if I sing a song, then, um, you know, people will most likely applaud, hopefully if it goes well. And at the end of a show, they may even stand up. Um, you know, I was lucky to even get recognition when I first started working on the cruise ships. I mean, there, you know, if you're on a ship, you're there to have a good time. You're most likely on holiday. You're going to have a couple of drinks. You're going to, you know, enjoy yourselves, which is what it's all about. And you, as an entertainer, I'm very much background, you know, and that. It's, it's hard. It's it's hard for a, an entertainer. You know, all of us entertainers, I think, we all we all have egos. You know, I'm not going to deny it on behalf of any of us. I think, you know, it's nice when people clap. Um, you know, and if they don't, then you sort of think, oh, you know, were they even listening? You know, I mean, I mean, we're being real now. Yeah, I mean, that's involved, obviously. And it was, it was hard. But it was also a crucial step in doing what I was doing. Um, you know, singing songs. You've you've mentioned the voice, and and I'm. It's it's an amazing thing for me whenever someone says that they enjoy the voice and and hearing the songs. But for me, I love to entertain, and uh, with that in mind, you know, I mean, what I'm singing will be 
will be dictated by my audience in front of me. Hopefully they'll enjoy what it is that I'm singing. And um, in terms of knowing it, what it is to sing at the right time, it was all crafted on those um, those nights those late nights, you know, alone in the bars on the cruise ships. We have a big star in this country who's a star of the cruise. Uh, she's called Jane McDonald. She's fabulous. She's told me many stories over the years about life on the cruises. I don't know whether I could stand it. You, you can't get away from your audience. That's odd that if they don't like you, they can come to you whilst you're having your dinner or lying by the pool and say, here, you're rubbish. They can. And you know what? Also, you know, the thing about it is you wake up the next day and you think, oh, that's OK. You know, that that song that just absolutely failed miserably last night, that's in the past. But it's not <laughs> because the people that were there in the audience are going to be there in your audience the next day. Um, so it's, it is hard. But you make, I mean... It's a growing up time, I suppose, for a young person. Um, I was 22, 23, and still occasionally pop onto a ship when I have some free time to do a show here and there. And um, it's it, it's a real time for independence, for growth, both as an individual, but also, more, more importantly, as a performer. Um, to sort of adjust to that and you know you learn to you learn to get over it it's definitely a time of growth I think what I'm about to say I mean is a great compliment to you if you take away the face behind the music you wouldn't imagine you're going to be stood there um you're very small, slim, um, you're very young, you're only in your early 20s, um, yet your voice is mature and big and grown up. Um, it, it's a fascinating thing, isn't it, when you hear an album and you see a picture. You wouldn't expect somebody like you has such an amazing voice. I mean that as a compliment. I think um, I, I was actually told just in the last week by a representative from the record company, um, I was reminded of the fact that I look very young. And it's it's almost a shock value. You know, I probably probably can't deny the part that it's played in, in me, you know, now being in the UK, being a recording artist, signed to UCJ. And, um, you know, it is obviously a far cry from working in pubs in New Zealand. Um, and, and shock value is, is what it's about. You know, you need, a, you need a bit. You know, what's the hook with yourself as an artist these days? You know, what is it? Um, so I'm, I'm very fortunate. But, I mean, and that's in that... In saying that, my, my voice is what it is, and I look how I look, and, you know, I'm trying to look older. I, I, I'm sick of being ID'd, um, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. And, and you know, if, if people if people think I look young, then, then so be it. Hey, if I, if I was a bigger guy, then I probably would have been a rugby player. That was the plan when I was younger. <laughs> but you know what? Um, working as a singer is certainly no settling for second best. I'm, I'm loving it. Will, thank you so much for talking to us today. It's a real honour and a privilege to find somebody so excited at what you do, and so passionate about what you do, and so good at what you do. Those three things don't happen very much in the media today and in show business because people get their fame and their CDs on the back of other stuff, and they don't last. I think you're going to be around for an awfully long time. The new CD is in your stores now. It's called Will Martin, A New World. What's the best track on the album, then? The best track, I suppose, for me... Uh, oh, uh, there's so many um, songs that I love. Uh, new Zealand is so so far away, I think. Thank you for talking to us, Will Martin. Cheers.